Sala. I'm from Kenya and I am currently pursuing a degree in broadcast journalism. Hello, my name is Omar and I am from Pakistan and I am studying in Comart's faculty in Stanford University. Hello everyone, my name is Yassi. I'm from Iran. I'm a major in logistics and supply chain. Hi everyone, I'm Zach and I am from America and I am currently studying uh, journalism and broadcast at Stanford University. Hello everyone, welcome to ID. Our first topic is going to be about the blue bus of Kabul, which aims to give children in Afghanistan a means of education, even despite the fact that many of the schools in that country are being bombed currently. And so this is a mobile version of a place where kids could come to learn. Um, we're going to be talking with our hosts about the implications of this, whether it's a good idea, a bad idea, um, and their thoughts. So, right. Well, for one, I think that it's, it's a great way to start something, you know, given that there's already so much um, problems and difficulties for those children. I think this bus uh, education, because it's, the, she can move from one place to the other, so she can reach a wide range of students, you see. Mm -hmm. And for a start, I think she's doing really good for herself and as well for these children who feel like they've lost all hope. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really great idea, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's a great idea. Like, what makes us humans that we want to know more? And even though these children are so young, they show interest in stuff like stories and, you know, education that they're giving. But I feel the main problem is it's not as effective. Because, because, like, you see, in mainstream education, there are a lot of people coming together. Whereas in this, it's just one bus. How many people could you fit at the max? 20 people? 25? So it's not giving an equal opportunity to everybody. And I, now I get that schools are getting bombed and all that. But I think the gov there should be some government funding or some solution taken to this. You can't just say, oh, we're being bombed, so we can't make any more schools. But I need to take action about it. You should make something of it. Because I really feel for these children. We have been so privileged our whole lives to get education, a safe life. And these children who are striving for so much, and they're getting a chance to see this, but the problem is not everybody will get to do it. I feel like something should be done about it. Well, for me, it is my own witness of the um, incident that one morning I woke up and my school were like blown up with, uh, uh, by, t by the terrorists. And I feel very pity for myself that I am a schoolist now. I don't have a school to go, I don't have, a book, I don't have books to read, I don't have any teachers to take education from. Uh, so for me it's, um, it's kind of a good move. It, it, as my friend Ali said, it, it's on very less uh, scale, so maybe she, uh, the founder of this um, and uh, move the bus, uh, Farishta Karim. Uh, she 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 can make it more like on a bigger scale maybe, or maybe the government can help them. Or now now I think that he's not she's not getting any help from the government. But if the state can help uh, her or her uh, foundation, maybe they will get in a bigger scale. Right. Uh, and yeah, and education is a need for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like whether you are, uh, whether you are poor or rich. Uh, it's a human right, and everyone should get it. Yeah. So by getting any, it's it doesn't mean that just starting by with a bus or anything. Uh, getting education came from anywhere, and I really appreciated that what she is doing in Afghanistan because it's a, uh, it's a country which is in war for a very long time, mm -hmm. and which the terrorists are just aiming the schools for the first time. Like it's this, it's their second biggest uh, priority to get the education out of the screen. Mm -hmm and uh, remove in the, from the people. Uh, so doing something like this, it's, it's like, it's very appreciable thing in such a country. Mm. And it sounds like it's just the start of something that could grow into something bigger. Yeah, which is yeah definitely. definitely. But when the government has no control over terrorism right. attack or something <laughs> right. on the school, then bus is way easier to yes. get attacked, yeah. like to That's be bombed. At the same time, um, when terrorism group are more powerful than the government, if the government don't help her, then um, she's, her life is in danger and yeah. a lot yeah, of kids of also. Yeah. So it's, it's a great start, but if, if 
this going to last for a long time? That's a question, right. which I don't think. Because terrorism group, they don't want people to get a real education. They want people to learn about religion only, right. and not a correct religion, wrong religion. Yeah. Brainwash. So, yeah. yeah. And I was, I was reading in some of the research that there are starting to be reports that the transportation agency of Afghanistan is in talks about maybe funding more buses yeah, for her, yeah. which I thought was a step in the right direction yeah, if, yeah. if she got some government support. Mm -hmm. I know that there's like a problem that the government maybe doesn't have as much power as it could, but at, I mean, it's better than her doing it as a free agent, mm -hmm. I think. But, but as far as I know, she's moving the buses from one point to another, right? right. They're uh, waiting for a specific time. And after they're removing the bus to another point, yes. but if she, if she or the state or anyone can help her and make a proper place for the uh, bus, like not a bus, or a, we can they can make a small building for it, and it can be like named by the blue bus or blue building something yeah. where children can all uh, anytime they want and they can come and uh, read the books or get the knowledge, and there should be a, a person in charge of that. Right. So yeah. I was in the in the videos oh. when I saw it, you know, when I made the research. The book's usually for small kids, it's yeah, not it's for... Yeah. Right, it's for like, young children. It's for exactly. really young children. So that is not a proper education. I feel like, I feel like maybe she ha need to teach like um, teenagers more hmm. than the people like eight um, less than 10. I feel a more no. modern approach to this. I The bus is, I would say, a quick start to it, but a more modern approach to it would be if the Afghanistani government or the people around could install internet access. Mm -hmm. Now, at, at the safety of your house, you can get all the information in your hand. E-libraries or something. And libraries, something like, mm -hmm. you know, online databases. Yeah. However, like, and you don't have to always put, you know, towers and everything. Underground channels can be made so that, you know, bombings won't affect it as badly. Yeah. And this internet access could not only open them up to, you know, books and information, they could be updated uh, for the whole, by the whole world. And, you know, if they need anything, they want to, you know, find a way like how to stay safe from a bomb, how to stay, you know, how to do this, how to survive. Mm -hmm. You always have it on hand. Right. So how achievable do you guys think that is? Do you think that's a like achievable goal? Well, in a country like Afghanistan, right. it's, in, in Afghanistan. it's very achievable. Thing. Like, I, I, sh I really appreciate her work. Like, really, it's it it, it needs a, a big intention to make it. You know. Like, yeah, I felt putting, like it was a good start. Yeah, like, yeah, she was trying. Yeah. Yeah. You're start. putting your life for it. Because she really is putting herself out yeah. there. Like yeah. you're saying, she doesn't have any support from the government, really. Yeah. She just graduated from point. Oxford. Oh, right. she's and she can do any work, uh, in, any, anywhere, you know. Right. But she's putting her life for it. And yep. in a country like Afghanistan, doing something like that, it right. be, it I mean, she could be doing anything, like you're yeah. saying. Yeah. She doesn't she have a lot of things are changing in Afghanistan also right now. I think a few years ago, the first female pilot was there in Afghanistan for the, I think, the chopper or something. Like yeah, that. chopper. Yeah, and things are slowly mm. changing regardless right. of how the terrorists are trying to do. Like, you know, they're trying to push people back, but us humans, we tend to unite together and push forward. Because mm -hmm. if we see something good, we're going to try to achieve right. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one thing I think about this, is that it's something. Yeah, it's something. So it's now something. we're talking about it, and like hopefully people will like come up with other ideas, maybe that are more practical or, or can reach a broader audience, but just yeah. the intention of this student that thought to try to do something, I think is really uh, interesting. You could even donate books to them, if yeah. you know, if you could find a way. Definitely. But I agree with the idea about the setting up maybe even semi-permanent, like a tent or something, yeah, tent, where yeah. it seems more like a real school, mm -hmm. but it's still movable yeah. to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. So after class, you pack up and leave. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's kind of a small library thing. Yes. Now, do you think that it's... So as far as like Yasi was saying, do you think that it's more important to... What kind of age group do you think is the most important well as far as I know it's they are getting every age there and there there are some interviews with the kids mm. and one of them is like uh, they also have university students they also have from uh, middle school and from high school students and as uh, she was saying that um, she's trying to provide it to every age group or mm. every education uh, place you know like high school middle school primary or university Oh. But as far as we say that, it's, it's just a starting. Yes. Yeah. So she's just doing it for small kids right, right. now. And it's in two languages, you know, just, uh, yeah. which is uh, Dari and just Pashto, which is their like, country language. Yes. Uh, if you have basic education, like you know your basic addition, subtraction, grammar, mm -hmm. 
would be enough because at a, at a scale like this, you wouldn't expect anyone to get a doctorate in that bus. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you, you walk yeah, in, you walk out as Dr. Adi, I'm like, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. if it were that easy, I would yeah. have it, but no. Right. But, but she's doing something else as well. Uh, at the moment, parents in Afghanistan, they don't trust, they don't want to like, mm -hmm. send their kids to anywhere for oh, yeah. education yeah. Yeah. because it's not safe, because they don't know if the kids go there are they coming back alive or something? Yeah. At, the, at the same time, she's risking her life, her family, right? And she's taking like, um, she also risking, uh, she also trying her best to get the parents' uh, trust right. in her. Got their so attention. That's a lot, yeah, that's a lot of, I think, responsibility that's yeah. going on for okay. her. Mm. But I hope like government actually support her. Right. Because if no one supports her, then it's going to be a long, Yeah, it's going to be so yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. But you well, she is from Oxford, right? Like she just graduated from Oxford. So I'm sure before she started this initiative with the buses and everything, I'm sure she has like a couple of her friends or forums or organizations that you know are helping her. Because trust me, it's it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Like you just you're a fresh graduate. You could be doing anything else in the world, right? But then you just choose to be selfless and give education. Like that's her way of giving back to her home country. Right, so I think she's really doing a commendable job, mm -hmm. and also on the matter of age groups. If I would say in my in well my opinion, I would say that getting to, getting to like adolescent kids, it's more difficult because they feel yeah. like life yeah. is already so hard, you know. Yeah. So it's so much easier to get to the younger kids because they want to forget. They don't want to hear the bombs all the time. You see, so I feel like her age group, if she started from zero to, let's say, a year old to like five years, those are the leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not yeah, saying that the lessons are not, but it's time, it's easier to get to the five year olds than it's easier to get to the ten year old. Trust me, it's hard teaching kids. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard. I went, I, I went on this thing, and they wouldn't listen to me. Now, if she manages to get the kids to listen to her, that's an achievement on its own. Yeah. <laughs> As far as I know, that she got um, the um, she got the idea from her own childhood. You know, like yeah, she, did. she was having like no no books to read, no library to go, yeah. and she was having some English books for for reading when uh, when she gets from the her university yeah. uh, from Oxford, and people were um, keep asking for it to read it. Mm -hmm. So she made an idea that if very less people can read it, why the others cannot? Right. So maybe. It's also a pickup point, you know, for her. Yes. Yeah. Because it came from her own personal experience. Yeah, personal experience. So we wish you all the best. I hope you keep going, girl, because it sounds like a great initiative. Thank you guys all for so much. A joint bank account has traditionally been a sign of commitment, but more and more millennials are opting for separate bank accounts. We're gonna turn this topic over to our hosts, see what they think about it. So, do you think that's important for a married couple to have a, like an individual account for each person? Do you think it should be a joint account? And then what do you think the implications? So like in the study that we are basing the talk on, um, they were saying that commitment has been uh, used in the past as an example of why you should have a joint bank account because you're committed to each other, but then the maybe newer um, feeling about it is that both people can be independent and they can have their own money and spend it how they like. Mm -hmm. So what are you guys' thoughts about that? Well, for one. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Break I, it down. Really. I think that before you get into a relationship or, or a commitment of any sort, you you have an account that's just yours, right? right? So I don't see a reason why you're going to walk into a relationship and eventually and, and like in, and eventually end up in a marriage and uh, bring all your life savings, okay? Join them together with these other persons. I think what a person should do, well, what I would do, actually, yeah. <laughs> is that I would uh, keep my individual bank account right where it is, yeah. okay? Yeah. Like, if we're talking about having something joined together, we will start afresh. We're going to open up a new account where we know, okay, this is for us, and this is what we're going to do with the money, okay? But, because here's, here's another thing. If we 
if I close up my personal account and put all my savings and, or all my money into this account, one person will always feel like, you know what? This is leverage for me. Right. If one person has more money, yeah. Than this is le like I came in with forty thousand. You only came in with ten thousand. Right. So you don't you don't get to tell me anything. See. So I'd rather if we both say that it's a joint. It doesn't matter how much you came in with. Let's just all put in some like an amount and let's just go from there. Right. Mm -hmm. My stance on this is just don't get married. <laughs> I mean, like, have you seen the divorce rates recently? It's skyrocketed. Like, it's fifty percent in the United States of America. Uh, Some people just marry to get divorced. It's like because they get so much benefits from this. Mm. And plus, I would say having a joint bank account makes no sense. Like, I get it. You love each other. You want to share everything. But if you want to show you have more trust in them, you would let them keep their own bank account. Like, you know, anything happens to one person, the other person's bank account is always there to support them. Mm. Right? So even in millennials, people have to think about themselves first before they think about others. Because you have your own career, your own things to do. And even if you care for them, you, know, you never know if you're going to break up or not. Mm. And you can't expect her to take half of everything. Like, let's say you've invested so much money in this. And if you keep it in your bank account, sure, you're going to pay yearly to her something, or to him something, equality, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. so, but like, if you're going to have a joint bank account, half of the money just goes to her or him. And it's like, what am I going to do with the rest? So, you know, there's no, there's no way of saying that whether a joint account can, you know, influence the relationship to, uh, in a good way or bad way. Because even couples, you know the number one thing what they argue about in, in their couple life? Finance. Yeah, that's mm. true. Finance causes the most problem. Hey, honey, did you pay the rent today? Oh, sorry, honey, I don't have money. Why? This is why I don't love you anymore. <laughs> Does it really go like that? Does it go like that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not married yet, but that's what I assume marriage would be like. You know? So the commitment thing, that's like yeah. brings up the other point. Do, do we think that having a joint account shows like a deeper amount of commitment because you're saying, I think the argument is that, okay, if you're willing to have a joint bank account, then you're not uh, anticipating breaking up. Like mm -hmm. you're in it for the long haul, you have the joint bank account. That's the argument at least. Yeah. I'm trying to play devil's well, advocate. Listen, I, I mean, you don't go into a relationship and telling yourself, we're going to break up. You go into a relationship and you literally wear your heart on your sleeve and mm -hmm. you expect the best out of it. See? And this whole thing about a joint bank account, oh, I love you so much, let's just join <laughs> our bank accounts together and do this. I mean, you could both decide to not even have the joint account. Okay? Like it, it's not a make or break. So you don't think it's a, it's a driving force behind whether it's someone's not, committed? No, or I don't think it yeah. is. What do you think of it? Well, for me, it's... Um, it's kind of a cultural thing. Huh. I, if if you get married, so we get to share what what is ours is our wife's and what is our wife's is ours. Right. Uh, it depends on culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, like it is a cultural thing. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, it doesn't make any difference because uh, if I join my uh, account with the wife, I am joining my life with her. Yeah. So what is what is uh, money is not important for me. Uh, it might be important for some people, like a lot of people actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, I don't care about it. And next thing is, uh, what if like, as Adi say that, if what if my money is finished and I cannot borrow from her? Of course I can because she is my wife, she's my life partner. Uh, but the thing is, actually we can, we can uh, put it into a levels. You know, like okay, honey, my money is for uh, home. Your money is for education for our kids. Right. We can put it. We can put it in factory. We can factory it. You know, like yeah. different for different things. And we can have so put in some more if we have, if we don't have, then okay, we are good with our money. Uh, so making a same account, it makes sense for me. Like, mm. I would be okay with that. I, I, I won't have any problem with that. Yeah. In so many cases, it brings jealousy. So if, like, if I'm married and my husband earning less money than me, mm. Maybe he get jealous because mm. I get more money. So it's That's like, one point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he'd be like, oh, so it depends actually on the culture. Right. But like, like I'm just saying, it's like some countries, the guy wants to have the power. They just want to say they are a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we earn more money than them, that's going to make them so embarrassed. Embarrassed, yeah. and they think like. <laughs> Okay, this relationship maybe is, is like not going to work anymore, and they don't want you to work. They put a lot of pressure on mm. you. I believe. Okay, you guys love each other. Love each other. 
but give a space to each other at the same time. Well, you know, because they say if I, you really go deep to everything, uh, yeah. that is, you, you guys are just going to get tired. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually really angry with Mariam because it's like, okay, you guys can have your own bank account and you can have one for like saying, like, what do you say? Right. I'm paying for rent, you pay for this, yeah. I pay for that. At the same time, it's like, the guy is not saying, oh, why you bought a shoes for $700? <laughs> <Right>. Or like, <laughs> you can spend, why, your, yeah, own you can spend money, your own money. money. Yeah. That's what I believe. I, I agree with Miriam and Yatsi. Yeah. yeah, well, in, okay, so in my situation, uh, I don't know if I'll ever be married. Um, but I don't have, so I, I don't know, like my husband and I, we don't have, we wouldn't have the same, I guess, societal implications of like, okay, the, yeah. the girl would be this and the guy would be this. Yeah. So that I think in a weird way helps us like that we come in <laughs> at like equal footing. Um, like we don't have that societal stigma mm -hmm. yeah. as much, but, then but I, so I agree, but I would still want to have my own money just so I can spend it on whatever I want and nobody yeah. asks me about yeah. it, but then have a uh, joint account for like bills, mutual bills. I think if it comes to an extreme, you could always make them a nominee for your bank account. Like, you know, if you are on the on deathbed or if you're like, you know, paralyzed or something like that, you always have a nominee that if something happens to you, they have access to your bank account. You know, in extreme situations. Yeah, yeah. That's coming like to a middle point. You know, you can always give money to her. There's no. There's like. Right. Do you, you love can her? Give it access to like. Exactly, but you like need that. something to keep you on your feet. Yeah. Because you know, if you're gonna spend everything and nothing's there remaining, then how are you gonna survive? Yeah. Exactly. But then, but then again, I mean, what's the foundation of your relationship? Is well, it, is it finance? Is it trust? Is it like what is it? It's all at once, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's you know, love once. can't be put in words, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of. I, I would say like you know, love is something that it just happens, and if you're gonna and, but aside from love, you need to think realistically too, mm -hmm. because let's say you get in a relationship, and most probably you'll be in a relationship while you're working, right? Mm -hmm. And you have other things to do. You got to take care of your family. You got to take care of your needs. You got to take care of her needs. So budgeting and all that, you have to do it with your money and her money. Yeah. And in budgeting, there's always one big rule, always keep a backup. Just in case anything happens, keep a backup. And the main reason for me is that like, I just want to maintain some... Like, of course, if my husband got sick or something, or even need the money for anything, I would give it to him. But mm -hmm. just for myself, I would also want to feel the independence of like, if I want to go and buy something, I don't have to... Yeah. Whatever, and just knowing that I'm okay in my own... Um, in my life, own and then <laughs> also being able to help the, out the other person. Mm -hmm. So and but being able to buy like a pair of shoes if I want to. And <laughs> my husband's like, why'd you buy me? <laughs> or like yeah. exactly if I want to like spend money on makeup and they'd be like, oh really? Yeah. You want to spend this much? Right, right. I get angry. <laughs> so I think like we're unanimously agreeing that you know joint bank account doesn't well, mean. Well, Uber is. Uh, well, Umer is like it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't much. matter. Yeah, it doesn't but matter. like I don't, majority of money. <laughs> So the majority of us would say that you know, a joint bank account does not um, cement that whether you love them or not, right? right? Yeah. I don't think it yeah. does. It's 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 money is just a, you know, a commodity, yeah. whereas love is something that you, you need. Of course. Yeah. Okay, fabulous. Thank you guys. That was a great one. Yeah. Thank you so much for that conversation.